So you can tell by the creative title what this is going to be about. And I'm going to have to be very careful because I am censored here and I want this video to be able to stay up. So let me say I'll be calling it uh, the Kraken instead of the actual thing that it is, which I will put on the screen here. And then you'll see in all of the articles that I'm going to show you uh, all my citations for the work that I'm doing here and the things that I'm showing you and links to everything will be in the description of this video. I used Kraken for my healing from all the nerve damage from the benzodiazepines. I continue to use it. I'm very careful about it. I'm calculated about it. And we're going to talk about it. It's uh, potential for abuse, all of the fear mongering and terminology that's on the internet. And I'm going to teach you about it, the strains, and to let you know if you tried it and it was dirty or it was gross or it didn't feel good or you had issues with it, there's a very good chance you got bad Kraken. And the reason I'm saying that is because it is one of the most abused and how do you call it? Infiltrated of all of the natural supplements, I think. And you can find it everywhere in your corner, gas station, grocery store, head shop, all this stuff. Most of that stuff is crap. They take the actual whole leaf and then they cut it with a bunch of fillers. It's old, it's stale. I can tell you, you know, it's, there's good chances if you're just running in somewhere off the street and just grabbing it and, and, and it's cheap, like you're, you're getting bad stuff. So I have been down that road now for five years looking for a good place to get it. Um, and I finally found one. I have been, I went out there and saw their facility and everything. It's now the highest quality and the best Kraken that I use that I've found. So like all my other things that I use after I fully vet it and do my research, I put it on my website at amnitadreamer.net. So go to amnitadreamer.net, go to where to buy. All the things that I talk about that I use, I link to there so that you can, nextly, I want to say, if you want my book on, on dosing Amanita, um, you can go to mushroomvoice.com. That's my store where I sell the things that I make. As of this video, it's June, it's uh, May of 2023. The book comes out in June. So from June 2023 on, you can get my book. Please go support me. As you can tell, there are no ads on my YouTube channel. They demonetize my channel. Let's talk about the Kraken. So this is an opiate-based painkiller. However, it's not that simple. And I'm going to share my screen here and show you. The so the first thing that I want you to notice is it is way more than just a painkiller. And I'm going to link to this study and you can find all of this in the description. But look here where it says that it its alkaloids exert control over analgesic, which is painkilling, anti-anxiety, anti-drug addiction, anti-psychotic primarily through the central, and that's the opiate pathways, but also the adrenergic pathways. This is important because this is a what we always talk about as a painkiller that's actually doing a whole lot more. And it's a highly complex natural substance. And then look, serotonergic. It hits the serotonin and dopaminergic. So it also hits the dopamine neurotransmitters. This is a highly complex thing. So what I have been using it for not only was for pain in the beginning when I was first um, coming off of the benzodiazepines, but now today I use it because I still will get issues when I have, I don't know, triggers or stress or whatever. I stack it with Amanita. And again, before you do anything like that, you need to listen to the caveats and to the warnings about this because it affects so many systems in the body. You can't just treat it like, oh, it's natural. It's harmless. It's not harmless, but also it's not the big dangerous fear mongering thing. And I'll show you some of those articles that, that engage in that kind of terminology, right? So it's nuanced and you just have to be intelligent about how you use it. 
So what I have been using it for is stacking it with Amanita. When I can feel like I've either used too much Amanita or I just don't feel like I want it or I need it. And what I'll do is stack it. And it's a beautiful stack with Amanita, but you have to be very careful with it. The same way that you wouldn't stack your an actual opiate, prescription opiate and benzo. Doctors do that, but they do it very carefully because the drug-drug interaction with that can be potentially, um, I've got to be careful about the words I say, but no longer leaving you here on the planet in certain high doses. I don't know that that's the case with the whole natural substances of both, but the potential is so great that that could be the, the case. But again, you've got to be very careful with it. So when I stack the two, it's in low dose. If I'm ever going to be doing a high dose of Amanita, it is the only thing that I do all by itself. I stop the use of any other of the substances that I have been using as my medication for a couple of days around that use. So again, just be very intelligent about it. But when I stack these two, it hits a spot. It, it, it's just this perfect sweet spot for me when I'm in a position where I need to be able to think and function. I'm busy. I've got a lot going on, but I'm having some kind of a flare up of the damaged nerves in my body, likely also because of the stress that I'm dealing with, or my mind is racing, or I'm not able to sleep, or I'm not sleeping very much because I'm just in a a place of, of having to work a lot, then I get this flare up of pain in those damaged nerves. And that pain combined with the anxiety or the stress or the lack of sleep, it seems like this scariest stack, it's perfect. And I don't need a lot. I'm using the Amanita in microdose. I'm probably taking what is half a dose of the Kraken uh, for most people. And when they work together in those low doses, it's it's just the perfect thing. But also, it seems to me that it's not euphoric. It's more just a very subtle, calming thing. And I focus, I think, I work, I settle, I sleep. But when I wake up the next day, I feel very good. Not only the good that that positivity that Amanita gives, but also now the serotonergic and dopaminergic effects of the Kraken. And... I think potentially, my opinion, there is a side of, of the Amanita also that is hitting dopamine. So when you look at opiate, at adrenergic, which is a different kind of pain receptor and serotonin and dopamine, the effects of the Kraken plus the effects of GABA, choline, glutamate on the muscaria side. This is only as of, um, let's see, this is 20, 2022. This is legality. So the red states are where it's illegal. Let me zoom in on that just a little bit so you can see it. So Vermont, these, these ones, and then uh, it's legal with age and location restrictions. So there's like counties in the yellow where it's illegal and then green is legal. So I just wanted to go over that real quick. When you see all the fear mongering about addiction and this, and I'll talk about this here. Let's talk about it. This is a 2023 study that showed, and I highlighted right here, the new data suggests relatively low abuse potential as compared to morphine-like opiates, stimulants, and other drugs of abuse that demonstrate robust rewarding effects across all abuse potential models. Please watch the language in the studies that you read and look at the ones that are just stating, look, here's the potential for issues here, but not here, here, but not here. These are fact-based and study-based and data-based information. But then, so one of the issues that we have when we start talking about these kinds of things, when we talk about addictive potential and liver interactions and all that stuff, it's the same issue that we have with the Amanita Muscaria studies that I say are highly problematic, that everyone just looks at the title, skims it, reads the conclusion, goes, oh my God, and then they say something about it. They agree with the article is that most of these studies aren't with the actual natural product. They are with lab-created, synthetic, isolated compounds. And when you look at these studies with Amanita or with the Kraken, please try to find out what it was they were studying. 
and then look at the dosing that they're talking about. And if they're saying that it's awful and they're making these conclusions of how dangerous, they're using terms like dangerous, real actual studies don't use that kind of terminology. They'll use actual data and say, in this many patients at this dose, we found this level of liver interruption or this amount at this dose, we found this level of dependence. It's a mere reporting of the results without a lot of extreme language that's biased and loaded. When these people that are on the construct and say it's dangerous because it hasn't been evaluated by the FDA, whether it's dangerous or not, it hasn't been evaluated by the FDA. That's not a reason to call something dangerous. Let's look at the studies. Over and over and over, they show they have a much lower potential for addiction and abuse, but also much easier to come off of with fewer experiences of side effects and pain. And then they list what those are, like the sweating and nausea and anxiety. Personally, and in the studies, they say there's very little anxiety associated with coming off of it, that most people experience sweating and the pain returning that they were treating, but not like this excessive like overreaction to pain and then uh, a little bit of, of nausea. So I'm not minimizing the fact that it's still using pain pathways. And it's not that these things are addictive, they are, but here's, here's the thing. It's that our nervous system is adaptive and it learns. And so when you're talking about direct pain pathways in nerves, they can respond to something, adapt to something, and then that's how that nerve is going to function because now it's it has adapted to that substance and changes how it's going to move and send pain signals. When you take the substance away, now you've got to shift back. So you've got this relearning, readaptability back to functioning without that substance. That's the addiction part of it. The question is, is it something that causes mental anguish and suffering to the point where you obsess on it and you have to go back and use it even if it's causing extreme problems in your life. That's where most of us talk about addiction. What these studies are saying is the use of it doesn't even seem to cause extreme life problems the way opiates do, either through sourcing bad ones, accidental leaving the planets from bad ones, but also the way that people who are adapted and addicted to man-made ones treat their family and their jobs and their loved ones, the way it alters their personalities and the way that they get obsessed with it and crazy about it, that that doesn't look like it happens with Kraken, natural version of it. And then indeed for me personally, I've had to use the man-made version when I had hand surgery. That's one of the worst experiences of my life coming off of that and having to adapt up at, at high doses and the side effects of that. Coming off of that was awful. It was two weeks of sheer hell. As opposed to the crack and natural version over here that I use today, I have had to use it temporarily in high doses and go through the withdrawal. And I can say it was 10% of what I went through with the other. And indeed, it was mostly just sweating and shaking and a little bit of nausea. And it was over in two days. I could still sleep through it. It was very mild comparatively. I'm just saying anecdotally, my experiences agree with what the research that I found shows. Let me tell you. If you're going to use this, then pay attention to drug interactions. They list a couple of, they, well, one of the studies talked about um, the liver issue is because this is highly cleared through the liver. Therefore, if you are on other medications that are highly active through the liver, the liver is involved in breaking it down. They mention antipsychotics, but this is, I don't even want to get into it because I don't want you 
to look at this and say, well, she said only that. So therefore, if I'm taking this drug, I can whatever. I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice. I'm reporting the research to you to to educate you about what the Kraken is, how I use it, and to show you how to do the research on it. But if you are on other medications, especially the man-made ones, please look into this before you stack anything. Because again, like a lot of these natural things and also with Amanita, the issues that we have that draw attention that people use to make these big claims about it being dangerous, it's interactions with man-made things, including alcohol, or it's stacking of multiple man-made things and then this natural thing. So please be careful if you are using man-made things. But also, just because we don't have human studies about stacking natural substances with natural substance doesn't mean it's safe. The main takeaway here is to not make black and white if-then statements, but to understand this is all very nuanced and we are not yet well versed in the use of these things and a lot of us are just sort of trying to figure this out on our own and a lot of this is unstudied especially like using amnita muscaria uh kraken is highly studied and the stuff is out there and they're continuing to study it let me tell you quickly about the different there's a lot of different colors or strains of it i personally vibe better with the red Mangda, which is one of the strains, because I just, my whole fucking nervous system is just cranked up so high. I need the calming effects of it. The white version is a very stimulating side and I've used it. It's beautiful. The energy and the, the ability to think, but also the way that it still has the pain numbing properties. It's, it's a beautiful strain. I keep both around and I've used both. It's interesting, and I'm, I haven't done this, to stack um, a dried piece of Amanita, which has that stimulating effect from ibotenic acid with the stimulating effects of the Kraken. I, I would be afraid to do that. That would freak me out because I'm already cranked up so high, I don't need that. But what I would be interested in learning about in the comment section is, do you use this? How do you use it? How do you stack it? And what have your experiences been? And I am not downplaying the adaptive addictive potential here. I'm telling you that it is. I'm telling you that you've got to be careful with it because anytime you're using the opiate pathways, then you have that adaptability by the nervous system that is just a necessary part of those biological pathways. When you're dealing with the dopamine pathways, again, you have the potential for something to be adaptive and addictive like alcohol and oh, sugar and uh, nicotine, anything that's going to involve those reward pathways. So this is not a comprehensive thing here, but I just wanted to talk about it and let you know I use it. I found a good one and to get a conversation going and start a, a playlist about stacking Amanita with other things. So this is sort of me beginning that playlist. And if you go to my channel, I have a bunch of playlists over there. I'm very good about playlists. I love you, beautiful people. Thank you for being here and supporting my work. Please buy me a coffee and help me keep the lights on because YouTube doesn't want me to. Later. <laughs>